Chapter 7 It was not fine. In fact, the court case was going horribly. Kelly felt like she was being vilified. She had felt confident over the past week from her chat with Mr. Ailes. She told her friends that it was going to be fine. Derek had disagreed, but Kelly had told them it was all under control. She was glad she hadn't allowed Dylan to hire any fancy lawyers. There was no way she could ever pay him back. Kelly had asked Derek not to tell Dylan when the court case was. They were barely friends. Mr. Ailes seemed competent. Her confidence had faded the minute the stern judge had focused his gaze on her. She didn't know why, but it seemed like Judge Bolin had made up his mind already and wasn't in her favor. "'Mrs. Islington, I understand you recently lost your job.' The judge peered down at her over his glasses. "'Yes, I was a nurse at Mercy Hospital. I'm sure I'll get another position very soon,' Kelly assured him nervously. "'On average, how many hours a week did you work at the hospital?' he asked. Sixty. Kelly clasped her hands in front of her. She tried not to fidget. "'Correct me if I'm wrong, but the hospital is probably the highest-paying employer for nurses. "'If you were to take on another position at, say, a private nursing home, "'would you have to work more hours to maintain the same amount of pay?' "'Judge Bolin wrote something down. "'Yes, you're right. I would have to work more hours to make up the pay.' "'Kelly's confidence fell. "'Yet you are behind on your rent so much that you've been served an eviction notice.' he grimaced. "'Your Honor,' Mr. Ailes shot to his feet. "'Mrs. Islington has talked to a debt consolidation service and is working hard to get her finances in order.' "'Mr. Ailes, sit down. I already told you that I prefer to simply talk to the individuals involved in the proceedings and skip the lawyer chat.' The judge looked down his nose at Kelly's lawyer. "'If you interrupt again, I will throw you out of my courtroom.' "'Mrs. Islington, do you have a response?' Kelly swallowed and tried to keep her breathing even. She felt like she was losing this case, that she was losing her son. "'It's an expensive city.' "'I understand that you share the bedroom with your son. How old is he again?' Judge Bolin was sifting through pages. "'I hung a blanket down the middle in the room for privacy,' Kelly tried to explain. "'Bentley has just turned eight. A delicate age where he should have his own room. He wrote something else down. Do you tend to spend a lot of money on non-necessities? No, absolutely not. Kelly had no money left over from the necessities. Anyone who looked at her finances could see that. Yet I have photos of you at the bar running up an expensive tab. The judge motioned for the bailiff to give Kelly an enlarged photo. Is that you? Kelly looked at it. It is. This was taken during my annual camping trip. It only happens once a year. We go to the bar and then we camp for the rest of the holiday weekend. You expect me to believe that a young thing like you only goes out to the bar once a year? Judge Bolin asked in disbelief. Yes. Kelly bit the inside of her cheek to distract herself from becoming overtly emotional. Bursting into tears wouldn't solve anything right now. It's the truth. The doors at the back of the courtroom opened a moment as Dylan entered. He quietly took a seat behind Kelly and her legal counsel. Kelly hadn't told him when the hearing was scheduled. She wondered how he had gotten the information. Mrs. Islington, the judge drew her attention back to the front of the courtroom. You have no income, no place suitable to live, and you expect to retain custody of your son. Your Honor... Mrs. Islington is the mother of this child. Mr. Ailes stood and risked the judge's wrath once more. She loves her son and is trying to get her life back on track. She can stay with her own mother for the moment. The maternal grandmother, who is a drug addict and an alcoholic? Miss Stone said dryly from across the aisle where she sat with the Islingtons. She's just been through rehab, Mr. Ailes said. How many times has she been through rehab during her life? "'Judge Bolin inquired. "'Mr. Ailes looked at Kelly. Eight times, Your Honor.' "'Kelly closed her eyes in defeat. "'She curled her fingers into her palms "'and pressed her nails hard into her skin "'in another attempt to distract herself "'from giving in to tears. "'She swallowed hard with the effort. 
I'll restate myself. You've no appropriate place to raise your son, nor any income to do so, the judge said. The paternal grandparents are financially secure and have a safe environment to raise the boy. He could continue to attend his current school. Do I have this right, Mrs. Islington? Excuse me, Your Honor. Dylan stood. Are your main objections to Mrs. Islington retaining custody of her son, her residence, and income? That would be correct. There's also the fact she is a very young single parent. The judge eyed him. Who are you? Dylan Ramsley. He introduced himself and saw a flicker of recognition from the judge. May I approach the bench? Please do, the judge said. Christopher's parents gave him dark looks. Kelly looked like her world was going to fall apart, and Dylan paused to touch her arm. He wasn't going to let that happen. Even if she had turned down his offers of help, he had given his word that she would not lose custody of her son. Dylan lowered his voice so only he and the judge could hear. What's it going to take for her to keep her son? You've already heard my issues. Residence, finances, and single status, the judge said. The Islingtons aren't going to let up on this. The only way that she's going to retain full custody is for her to be married, financially secure, and have an appropriate residence where her son has his own private bedroom. Otherwise, they're going to continue to press for custody. As it stands right now, she has no shot of keeping that kid. Why is married an issue? Dylan persisted. Plenty of single women raise children. Kelly might look young, but she just turned thirty. The judge snorted. The Islingtons are going to dog her every step to prove she's an unfit parent. Dating? Drinking? He pulled up a picture of the group at the bar as proof. Dylan also saw other pictures on the judge's desk, including one of Kelly and him going into their tent. He could imagine the Islingtons intended to use the pictures to cast doubt about Kelly's moral integrity. It wouldn't matter that he and Kelly had been clothed the entire time. Aren't there laws against spying on people? Dylan questioned. Only if they aren't in a public place. The judge looked at Dylan shrewdly. You look like the one that got kidnapped by her friends. How am I supposed to give custody to a woman who associates with criminals, Mr. Ramsley? Dylan scowled as the judge tapped his finger against a series of pictures. He could see himself getting tossed in the trunk. It was a prank. If I had actually been kidnapped, I would be pressing charges. Funny prank. The judge didn't look amused. It still shows a lacking amount of judgment in the selection of her friends. Your Honor, Kelly works so many hours she barely has time for her friends, Dylan said. That's another point against her. The judge warmed to the subject. Her finances are a complete mess. With the income that she has versus the debts, it was always a losing battle. Look, Mr. Ramsley, my verdict isn't set in stone just yet, but I'm leaning toward awarding custody to the paternal grandparents. Dylan knew he couldn't let that happen. He mulled over the options. What if she was engaged or in a committed relationship with someone who could provide for her? The judge gave him a knowing look and pointed to the picture with both Kelly and Dylan coming out of the tent. You might promise me that you're engaged. You could promise me fairy sprites and unicorns, Mr. Ramsley, and I might believe you. If you paid me enough, I might even tell others there were such things. However, the Islingtons are not going to budge. They won't settle for a fiancé. Unless you've got a husband somewhere for the girl who is more powerful and has more money than them, she's just going to go through court again and again until they win. Why prolong the custody battle? Thank you for your bluntness, Dylan said dryly. Mr. Ramsley, I'm having a fundraiser for a very special cause. I would really appreciate it if you would consider donating to it. The judge raised an eyebrow. As a separate fact, I can lean towards Kelly Islington at this time, with joint custody going to the grandparents until she can rectify her situation. A bribe. He wants a bribe, Dylan thought angrily. He wondered how much the Islingtons had paid. Dylan also knew that he couldn't accuse the judge of asking for money since it would be his word against Dylan's. He also knew that if the Islingtons were granted partial custody, soon enough they would have full custody. The judge was right about them not letting this rest until they had won. 
Even if he did pay the bribe, it was only going to work this one time. The Islingtons weren't going to let this rest. There really was only one way that Kelly was going to win this thing. The Islingtons were fairly wealthy. Dylan had seen them at various hospital fundraisers and knew that Kelly simply didn't have the funds nor the connections to fight them, especially when they didn't play fair by using innocent photos made to look bad and a judge who took bribes. Kelly was going to lose her son, unless he stepped in and did exactly what the judge wanted. "'What if I were engaged to Kelly?' Dylan asked. "'What if you were?' the judge shrugged. "'Tomorrow you might not be. I'm looking for something much more permanent for Bentley. Marriage might not last, but divorce isn't cheap.' "'I'm very sorry, Your Honor. I won't be contributing to your fundraiser,' Dylan said flatly. He had promised Kelly that she wouldn't lose custody of Bentley, and he meant to see it through, even if it wasn't something that he wanted. "'That's a shame,' the judge shrugged. "'It's unfortunate, but in these sorts of cases, money usually wins.' "'It is,' Dylan agreed grimly. He turned his back to the judge and went to Kelly's attorney. "'Mr. Ailes?' "'Yes,' Mr. Ailes nodded and smoothed down his tie. "'Did you get him to listen to reason?' I've never had a case where the judge has been so reluctant to grant the mother custody. If we lose, what are the chances of an appeal working? Dylan ignored Kelly's horrified gasp. It depends on what judge we get, and how long the process takes to bring it back into court. With Bentley being in a reasonable situation, it could be considered a lower priority. Mr. Ailes frowned. The courts are backed up. It could be anywhere from six months to two years for an appeal to be heard. By then, Bentley would be used to the situation with his grandparents. At age ten, he might even be allowed to testify where he wants to live. Two years is a long time for a child to stay loyal to a parent. Unless Kelly's situation substantially changed, it's likely the court would just grant her visitation. Are you two done talking so I can give my verdict? The judge drawled. Dylan ignored him a moment. His stomach dropped as he looked at Kelly and made a decision that was going to impact both of them for the rest of their lives. However, he had been brought up to keep his word, and he wasn't going to stop doing that now. Kelly, I promised you wouldn't lose Bentley. She nodded, tears in her eyes. Kelly took a deep breath and tried to be realistic. I know you did, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. It's okay, Dylan. Dylan knew it wasn't okay. He grabbed Kelly's hand in his and turned back to the judge. I'm sorry to interrupt, but Kelly and I will require your services today, Your Honor. Excuse me, Mr. Ramsley, I don't quite follow. The judge glanced over his glasses. Mrs. Islington and I would like to get married. Dylan dropped the bombshell calmly. It solves all of the issues of custody, and we have decided not to wait, after all, since Bentley's future is at stake. You're saying that you and Mrs. Islington are engaged? Bolin raised an eyebrow at the irony. Yes. Dylan didn't hesitate with the lie. He looked squarely at the judge. This is preposterous, sputtered Miss Stone for the Islingtons. Who is this man? We don't know anything about him, Mr. Islington jumped to his feet. What kind of man is he? Is he safe with children? Dylan Ramsley, son of Robert Ramsley. Dylan introduced himself. I manage the eastern half of Ramsley Insurance, a large company that insures hospitals, insurance businesses, pharmaceuticals, and more. I have two sons. I meet all of judges' requirements for Kelly retaining custody of her son. I'm financially secure and have a home where Bentley may have his own room. Bentley will also be able to continue to attend Livingston Academy. How convenient, said the judge. Come on up to the front, then, and we'll do this up properly. Barbara, find the necessary paperwork. Kelly had a death grip on his hand. She was shaking. He didn't feel too steady himself, but was determined to see this through. This whole thing was a farce, and it was the only way to beat the Islingtons without resorting to an illegal bribe. This is a fake marriage, a sham! Mrs. Islington said scathingly. She'll do anything to keep our grandson from us. Dylan disregarded her and brought Kelly up before the judge. Rings? the judge asked. 
We weren't expecting to be married today, Your Honor, Dylan said wryly. Barbara, get that box of rings, the judge grumbled. It'll cost you extra, but I've some spares. They sorted through the plain gold bands to find two that would fit. Kelly's hands shook so much that Dylan had to do it for her. He wondered what she was thinking right now. Barbara, where's that piece of paper you wrote up? There it is. The judge held up a piece of paper and settled his glasses so that he could read through them. He began to read the form in a bored voice. Marriage is the honorable estate in which a man and woman pledge to be true to one another, and in the process choose to become one. This is a lifetime commitment to one another in which promises a bond for life. Marriage is one of the most important obligations that two people will ever swear to uphold. Marriage is a challenge, but it is love. It is a promise that should last a lifetime and a commitment to be there one for the other, no matter what happens, no matter who fails, for better or for worse. Marriage is sustained by love. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful. Love is not arrogant or rude. Love does not dishonor others. It is not selfish. It is not easily angered, nor does it keep a record of loss. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Dylan, do you take Kelly to be your wife, to live together in the state of marriage, love her, not hurt her, honor and keep her, in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keep only to Kelly for so long as you both shall live? Dylan looked down at Kelly, seeing her vulnerability and strengthened his resolve. I do. Dylan, please place this ring on Kelly's finger, and this ring will serve as a symbol of your lasting commitment to her. The judge waited for Dylan to place the ring on Kelly's finger. Kelly, do you take Dylan to be your husband, to live together in the state of marriage, love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others, keeping only to Dylan for as long as you both shall live? I do, Kelly whispered. Kelly, place this ring on Dylan's finger, and this ring will serve as an lasting symbol of your love and commitment to him. The judge waited for Kelly, who needed two tries to put the ring on Dylan's finger. It's my honor and privilege to introduce to everyone here Mr. and Mrs. Dylan James Ramsley. Mr. Ramsley, you may kiss your bride. Dylan leaned down and gave Kelly a gentle kiss. He could hear Kelly's group of friends clapping and catcalling. Kelly blushed. Order. The judge banged his gavel. Sign the paperwork, please. They signed where necessary, and Dylan paid the fees involved. Afterward, the judge came down and shook their hands. I hope I'll be invited to the celebration you have with your families and friends. Dylan didn't promise anything. Your Honor, Miss Stone interrupted. What about the custody of Bentley? The judge looked at her in surprise. Mrs. Ramsley has a support system, is financially sound, and has an appropriate place for her son to live. She retains full custody. The Islesingtons protested, and Miss Stone assured them that they would put in an appeal. While Kelly and Dylan were receiving congratulations, Derek walked over to Cynthia. How does it feel to lose? You could have told me, Cynthia glared at him. I should have known about Dylan Ramsley. Derek shrugged. Conflict of interest. She's my friend. It's your job to keep me informed, Cynthia growled. Don't ever do that again. Next time, if I tell you to drop a case, maybe you ought to, Derek replied before turning his back on her to go congratulate Dylan and Kelly. He had the feeling the whole thing between the couple was a show for the court, but he wasn't about to complain. Dylan had done with money and status what none of them were capable of doing. Derek shook Dylan's hand. We need to talk about the appeal process Miss Stone is likely to bring forward. Somewhere private, where we won't be bothered. Agreed, Dylan nodded. He was willing to listen to any suggestions Derek might have. He also wondered just how far the Islingtons were willing to go to gain custody of Bentley. They had already sent a private investigator to take photos of the camping trip, dig up Kelly's finances, and knew about her employment situation. If they were that thorough, then they probably would be watching Dylan and Kelly. This meant Kelly and Bentley would have to move in with Dylan. 
Suddenly, the simple gold ring felt heavy on his finger. He had made a lot of promises in the last few minutes. Once again, Dylan had shackled himself to a woman in need without truly thinking the whole thing through. Although, to be fair, with Wren he had been naive, thinking he could handle her issues. What were Caden and Avery going to think? He had just changed all of their lives irrevocably within the last twenty minutes. He looked at his new bride and wondered if he was strong enough to survive a second marriage. After the first, he hadn't been inclined to ever enter the state again. It was too late now. All he could do was hope that he wouldn't come to regret the impetuous decision that he had made to commit himself again. They made promises to invite her friends to a celebration in honor of the wedding and watched as the Islingtons left in a huff. Kelly indicated that she wanted to collect Bentley from the child service worker he was waiting with in an adjacent room to the courthouse, and Dylan agreed. Derek lingered as the friends left. He showed them to a side room. "'I'm sorry to keep you a moment from Bentley, but we should talk,' he began. "'It's important that both of you be on the same page and keep up appearances until a verdict on the appeal is in. As you know, it could be as little as six months or up to two years, depending on where you fall in the court system.' that long? Kelly asked, feeling uncertain. She wondered if Dylan would want a divorce after custody was finally settled. She hugged herself, insecurity creeping in on her. It's a possibility, Derek allowed. What do we need to do? Dylan wanted to know. You need to live together. You need to sleep in the same bedroom. Derek was very serious. What? Kelly tried not to blush. Derek! I know Stone. She's already talking appeal with the Islingtons. Derek was insistent and logical. They're going to investigate your life. You have to think that everything you do right now, and for the next part of the foreseeable future, is going to be spied upon. They will bribe the housekeeper, the cleaning staff, the school teacher, whoever they need to, so that they can get any dirt on you and sway a judge's opinion. You might think the people around you are rock solid, but they will be investigated too. The last thing you want is for them to be able to prove this is a sham marriage in any way. I agree. Dylan was grim. He knew they were already capable of spying from the pictures he had seen on the judge's bench. They have already proven they aren't trustworthy. You should also allow them to see Bentley on occasion, Derek cautioned. One afternoon every two weeks is practical. After they tried to take him away? Kelly protested. I don't think so. Kelly, it would help to make you and Dylan look more reasonable to the next judge that hears your case, Eric stated. After the appeal, you can cut them off if that's what you decide. However, remember that Bentley is a good and honest kid. If you aren't sleeping in the same bed, or you argue at all, he's probably going to tell the grandparents. They are going to be asking him questions to try to get information. Kelly closed her eyes. This is a nightmare. Dylan exchanged looks with Derek as he put a hand to his new wife's back. It's going to be okay, Kelly. How? she asked plaintively. They are using my son as a pawn in this custody battle. I don't even think they want him. It's more about keeping up appearances to their friends. Once we win, the appeal will be over, Dylan said firmly. You will never have to deal with them again if that's what you want. If either of you have anything in your past that might reflect badly on you, get it dealt with, Derek advised. Don't think that anything might be left unturned. The Islingtons will hire a private investigator. Should we be hiring one in return? Dylan inquired. Probably not a bad idea. Derek responded with a sigh. Most times these things come down to money, unfortunately. We all know the Islingtons are loaded. Dylan smiled in grim satisfaction. In that case, we will win hands down. How does it come down to money? Kelly questioned. Shouldn't it be based on who would be the better caregiver? We would like to think of it that way, Derek confessed. But there are some corrupt judges out here. Only a few, yet if you know who they are and you can get the case seen by them, then a bribe can make all the difference. Bribing judges? Kelly was horrified. It happens. Not often, but it happens, Derek said. Look, Stone has never lost a case before. She thought she had this one in the bag. 
She is going to come out rabid for a win during the appeal process, so I imagine she's going to do everything she can to make sure she gets the right judge. Is there any way we can stop her? Dylan asked. If you can prove there was a bribe, then we can get the appeal thrown out. Derek shrugged. I doubt that's going to happen. So if you have any sway whatsoever, I would use it to make sure you get an honest judge. I can't see anyone not granting you custody since you are the birth mother and stepfather, are financially secure, and have a good home for Bentley. I will see who I can contact about that. Dylan would have to talk to his father and find out who he knew that might be helpful. The word stepfather hit him hard. Another person to be responsible for. One more thing. Derek hesitated. Try not to let Bentley do too many physical activities until after the appeal. Why? Kelly was confused. The last thing you want is for him to get injured, and they try to claim abuse. Derek scowled. It's rare, but it happens. What? Kelly was incensed. That's crazy. Who would do that? Angry and desperate people, Derek supplied. And they are both of that. Any other advice you can think of? Dylan inquired. He appreciated that Derek was helping them. Get married, he advised. I know technically you already are. However, having a planned celebration with your family and friends will help cement the relationship in the eyes of the court. They want to see you guys make a success of the marriage. So throw a good wedding. Do the honeymoon. You have to seem like any other couple. Go to events together. Do family things together. Get a dog. Get a dog? That's advice? Dylan had to smile at that. The judge might talk to the kids to see how things are going. The kids are going to have to get along. Derek smiled ruefully. I always tell blended families to get a dog or two. That way the kids have something to concentrate on rather than becoming jealous about the stepkids spending time with mommy or daddy. It saves a lot of marriages. Good advice, Dylan conceded. He looked at Kelly. Shall we get a dog? Why not? Kelly felt overwhelmed. She hugged herself and tried not to lean on Dylan. The fact that he had his hand on her back was a comfort, but what she really wanted to do was just hold on to him and hide from everything that was happening. Bentley's always wanted one, but I worked too much and the apartment was so small. Would Caden and Avery like a dog? I'm sure they would be thrilled, Dylan admitted. Can we go see Bentley now? Kelly asked. What was she going to tell her son? It wasn't every day a person got married. She supposed they were going to move in with Dylan. Derek had said they should share a room. How was she going to sleep in the same bed with the man beside her all night long? Planning a wedding and a honeymoon? It was happening too fast. Let's go. Dylan thanked Derek again, then steered her to the room where Bentley was waiting so they could collect her son. Bentley looked up from coloring and immediately ran to give Kelly a hug. Mom! She hugged him fiercely. She had only had the two supervised visits since Thanksgiving. Kelly missed her son. She tried, unsuccessfully, not to cry on him. Am I coming home? Grandma and Grandpa want me to live with them, but I don't want to, Bentley rushed to say. I want to stay with you. I'm glad you want to stay with me. Kelly wiped her eyes and smiled. That's a good thing, because I'm keeping you. Promise? Bentley asked. Totally pinky swear, Kelly responded as she hugged him harder. Okay, okay, he squirmed in her arms. When can we go? Hi, Mr. Ramsley. Hi, Bentley, Dylan answered. I'd like it if you would call me Dylan, please. Mom said I wasn't supposed to, Bentley frowned. It's not polite. Things have changed, Dylan explained. I think it would be okay if you used my first name. Kelly nodded as Bentley looked to her for confirmation. It's okay. We have some news, Dylan said. Bentley looked at them expectantly. The judge was a little concerned about where we were living, Kelly started. He also didn't like that I didn't have a job currently. I like that you don't have a job, Bentley said. You've been able to spend more time with me. It's nice. Kelly sniffed. Her voice was choked up as she replied, I love spending time with you too, Bent. And your mom is going to be able to spend even more time with you because she won't have to get a job, Dylan inserted quietly. Really? Brentley frowned. That'd be great, but how are we going to pay the bills? I am going to pay them, Dylan said. I've asked your mom if she and you would like to come live with me. 
The judge married us today, so now we're part of a family. Kelly waited tensely for Bentley's reaction. Does that mean Avery and I are brothers? Bentley asked. Stepbrothers, Dylan supplied. You will have your own bedroom. You can still go to school at Livingston Academy. And Mom will be there too, Bentley questioned. Absolutely, Kelly smiled. It'll be fun. I can spend more time with you and you like Avery, right? Bentley nodded. This is cool. Kelly breathed a sigh of relief. She had hoped Avery and Caden would be on board with this unexpected marriage as well. It would make it so much easier if all the kids got along. They decided to drop by Kelly's apartment to pick up some necessities before going to Dylan's house. That way, Bentley could see his room, plus they could tell Caden and Avery the news. Kelly felt nervous about how Dylan's sons might react, but pushed the thought out of her mind. She resolved to focus on one thing at a time until she felt more comfortable with the situation. As they were leaving the courthouse, a crowd of people met them on the steps. A couple of flashes went off, and someone pushed a recording device in Kelly's face. What is your name? Kelly? Kelly trailed off. She looked in confusion at Dylan, whose face was impassive as he tried to steer them through the crowd. Is it true? Are you now married to Dylan Ramsley? Another person was holding a cell phone, videotaping and asking Dylan, Were you really kidnapped, Mr. Ramsley? What did they demand for your freedom? No comment, Dylan repeated again and again in response to their questions. Mom, who are these people? Bentley asked. Kelly could barely hear him over the crowd, all pressing in around them. She grabbed Bentley's hand tightly, fearing of losing him in the throng of people. I think they're reporters, honey. Dylan managed to get them to the street and opened the door of a waiting cab. They quickly got in. Excuse me, sir, the cabbie responded. I'm waiting for another fare. A lady called. You will have to miss it. Dylan plucked some money out of his wallet and put it onto the tray. That's your tip if you take us to where we wish to go. Cabby's eyes widened as he counted the amount. Where to? Kelly set the last of her clothes in the drawer in the master bedroom. Dylan had more than sufficient room in the large walk-in closet. As it was, she had less clothes than her new husband, as most of her wardrobe consisted of nursing scrubs. She had boxed them and put them in a corner of the closet because she really didn't know if she would need them again. The apartment that she had rented had come partially furnished. All the big items had been her landlord's. There were a few smaller items, linens and such, but compared to what Dylan already had, they seemed shabby. Kelly had ended up donating them after asking Tiana what she wanted. The only thing she took besides clothes, photo books, necessities, and an old baby blanket of Bentley's was a cup she had gotten from the group of nurses at Mercy. The cup had a saying on it, Nurses make all the difference. It was cheesy, but Kelly put it in the master washroom along with her meager supply of toiletries. She had a feeling cohabitating with Dylan was going to be a lot like sharing the tent. Only the bed was a lot bigger. Maybe she would manage to stay on her own side. Kelly opened her banking app on her phone. She needed to change her address. What she saw inside stunned her. It couldn't be right. Kelly checked the figures again and decided she knew exactly who the culprit was. She marched out of the bedroom. Dylan! Kelly came to the office with her phone. She was upset. What am I supposed to do? Excuse me? He looked up from his spreadsheets with a frown. Do about what? You paid my loans, Kelly stated. Everything. The student debt, the medical debts, everything I was behind in, you paid off. Now there's money in my account which wasn't there before. I thought you might want something for expenses. Dylan was a little confused. Is there a problem with that? It's too much. Kelly waved the phone around. What am I supposed to do? He shrugged. Whatever you like. My mother always said that a woman should have money of her own to do with as she wanted. If you would like to do a little redecorating or purchase something, you shouldn't have to ask for the cash. Now it's right there in your accounts. Plus, I set up an education fund for Bentley. You don't understand, she exclaimed. I was supposed to pay off those debts. Kelly. Dylan sighed. 
even if you earn top rate as a nurse and work crazy hours without paying any housing costs, it would take you until retirement to pay off those bills. Plus, you would never have spent any time with Bentley. I have enough money to easily erase them. It wasn't an imposition. It's too much, she repeated. A tear trailed down her face. How am I ever going to repay you for this, for Bentley's custody, for everything? Dylan stood and carefully wiped away the tear. He didn't like to see her upset. Just be yourself. You are great with Caden and Avery. You make the house a little happier. That's not enough, Dylan, Kelly stated firmly. You just fixed my entire financial life. I don't know what I can do in return. You don't have to do anything in return, Dylan frowned. You gave me a savings account, she shrugged, overwhelmed and uncertain. I have never had one. Did you say you set up a college fund for Bentley? I did, he confirmed, a little worried that she might start crying for real. She looked like she was on the edge of doing so. I also put you on my gold card. Yours should be coming by special courier. Gold card? Kelly frowned and sniffed. I have awful credit. Not any more. It's fixed, Dylan replied. By blending their accounts, he had taken a bit of a hit in his, but he didn't think he should tell her that. Over a couple years, their credit score could return to pristine. I don't want you to have to worry about money ever again. A couple more tears made an appearance as Kelly stared at the screen of her phone. Bentley can go to college? Anyone he wants to, provided he gets good marks, Dylan promised. He reached out to wipe away her tears, but suddenly she was hugging him. Dylan paused, surprised. He gently embraced her, letting her cry on him. Other women would take the money as their due for marrying him, he reflected. Kelly was worried about paying him back or finding a way to thank him on equal measure. It was refreshing that it had never occurred to her to ask him to retire her debts. He also had a feeling that he was going to be pushing her to spend any of the money that he had given her. Dylan leaned down and pulled her a little closer. She might not think so, but right now this was thanks enough. Dylan breathed in the scent of her and rubbed her back. She gave a watery laugh as she let him go, wiping her eyes. I'm sorry. Kelly, don't, Dylan said. You don't need to apologize. I'm a mess, Kelly hiccuped. I will get better after I get some sort of routine. You are doing just fine, he reassured her. What's this? Kelly spotted a paper on his desk. It had pictures of them at the courthouse and a few others. She frowned as she looked at them. Is that a picture of Tomlin throwing you in the trunk of a car? It's a mock-up of tomorrow's tabloids. A friend sent it along. Dylan sighed. It doesn't look too good. Ramsley drama continues with kidnapping, marriage, and custody battle, Kelly read in horror. This time, it looks like Dylan Ramsley, son of Robert Ramsley of Ramsley Insurance Corp., has entered the fray of family drama? They can't print this, can they? I expect it will be worse by the time morning comes, Dylan said dryly. It sells more copies. Kelly remembered when she had read the tabloid drama about Michael and Anne how excited she had been to know someone who was in the papers. Now she was in the papers herself and wished desperately that she wasn't. I am so sorry, Dylan. Why? he shrugged. You didn't personally send the pictures to them. Someone from the courtroom did, though. He pointed to one of them at the front of the courtroom, him putting a ring on her finger. Kelly looked at the angle of it. Could it have been the Islingtons? I don't think any of my friends would have done this. I'm wondering if it wasn't their lawyer. By stirring up the tabloids, she can make us look bad in court, Dylan surmised. That's despicable, Kelly frowned. Miss Stone seems to be the type who only wants to win. Dylan took the paper out of Kelly's hands and tossed it in the garbage. We will make sure that doesn't happen. How can you be so sure, she asked. Kelly wished she had his confidence. Remember when you told me I was doing a good job being a dad at Avery's birthday party? He waited for her to nod. You are a great mom. The judge will recognize that. Kelly smiled lopsidedly. Thank you. Now I'm going to brave the bedtime routine and make sure the kids have brushed their teeth. Care to come? He asked her. Absolutely, Kelly responded. I like these new odds. 
Dylan said as they came out of his office. It used to be two to one against me. Now I get to share, so it's more like one and a half to one. Doesn't that make my odds worse since I was even with Bentley? Kelly frowned in mock seriousness. I guess it does, Dylan shrugged. Too bad for you. Hey, Kelly laughed. That's not very nice. Who said I was nice? Dylan grinned, pleased that he had distracted her from the tabloid fiasco. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this chapter, please look for the next chapter of Reluctant Husband. Also, please subscribe to this channel to enjoy other audiobooks, helpful videos, and insights into writing. This is free for you and would really help me grow my audience with the algorithms. Thank you.